I've adopted a new look for teaching now, like the mass man, because it's that cold outside tonight. Luckily, we are off somewhere tomorrow that is going to be a little bit warmer, so let's find out where that is. How foggy is it here as well tonight? It's like the hound of the Baskervilles out there. I'm just expecting some crazed wolf to run across there in a minute. Okay, so this week's lesson improvement comes from a chap called Sean. Sean was struggling with um, quite big misses right and then sometimes would throw in a little bit of a pull hook. Now, if I just throw a little plain line on each of these, one of the things that we saw with Sean, and I've only got the two down the line images here, was that, and his old one here on the left hand side, it was pretty good, a little bit inside going back, pretty good up to the top and then he tends to get it just a little bit fractionally steep over the top here. One of the things that you can't see from this image was that generally as Paul was, uh, Sean was gripping the club here, you can make it out slightly a little bit from this image, but what was tending to happen, Sean was getting it too much in the palm, so if anyone who gets wear up in the top corner of the glove and you start to get a hole um, opposite pretty much where the thumb is at the base of your hand, that's going to signify that you've got the grip a little bit too much in your hand there. So from here he was struggling to release it, so he was finding as he was getting it over the top, the face was wide open generally, so mid irons he was okay, but we see this one starting out right, the target being here. What we were seeing then was um, they were starting right and starting to go even further right, and then now and again he would flip one of them. Um, flip one of his right hands in on the way down and try and get the face shot to try and save it because the grip wasn't actually able to support any hinge throughout it any release because it was in the palm and just couldn't actually be strong enough to do that so we changed his grip a little bit then we worked a little bit on his plane and what we can see here I just put a cone down there just instinct more than anything just to get him instinctively missing this on the inside and feeling that the club was traveling a little bit more inside we did a little bit of work of where we'd like it to be but what I got him to do was just pull everything left for sort of 10-15 minutes and then from there it was like right now we're going to be able to hit out to the right a little bit with the club and get it swinging right because the face is releasing in a in a manner that we'd like to see pretty consistent to the arc as opposed to where it was open 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 and flip now and again so what we see from here when Sean just as he gets to horizontal for the last time the club being there what we now see as he goes through this ball as he starts to come down, face just a little bit more neutral, slightly closed if anything, and as he gets down to horizontal for the last time, we can see the heads, one here, just behind the hands, and one here, out in front, looks a little bit further on, because, um, like I say, he wasn't able to actually maintain the angles of his golf swing due to that poor grip, so when you are a little bit of a slicer or someone who struggles to get the face released, always check that grip, because you will react to it, to buy throwing it over the top because there won't be enough support there in the wrist so here with a better grip we can see now that he's moved it more from the inside and get something that starts just fractionally right of target and we can see it just working back towards the target there so really really good work from Sean there so check your grip firstly and then see from there if you can start to get it releasing a little bit if you are a slicer rub your nose in it a little bit hit a bit of a you know, a bit of a session where you're pulling it or pull hooking it and then we can get you swinging out to the right and getting you drawing it. So, fantastic work there this week from uh, this week's change. So, keep that up, Sean, if you are watching the video. It's great to see it. Anyone who does want to come and see me, you know where I am. The info is in the end of the video. So, keep watching. Got some more stuff for you in this video and I think you're going to enjoy.
Now, if that doesn't make you want to golf, I don't know what will. Should we uh, just sack our filming off and go and play nine holes, Pete? Think you've got work to do, Matthew. Work to do. <laughs> right, so we're leaving now. Off to the practice ground. More filming, and then it's home back to uh, Trafford Centre. So, I'll see you there. So if you probably have guessed, I'm actually abroad now. I'm in uh, the glorious La Cala Resort. I'm over here with uh, another coach from Trafford Golf Centre, Pete, our director down at Trafford Golf Centre. And we're actually working on the other project that I mentioned in the last video. So we do instructional content for another site in America and we've been out here filming that for the past couple of days. Been successful, Pete? Very much so, Matthew. Yeah, some fantastic weather out here. Great facilities at La Cala. And, uh... Some, uh, some good banter going backwards and forwards and some great tips in the camp. Definitely. So, unfortunately those tips actually don't go onto YouTube, but, you know, I can replicate some of the stuff and you will be seeing stuff like that on the channel moving forwards anyway. But definitely a big thank you to Lakala. We met the general manager and Darren from uh, PSM Sports and they've been more than helpful than while we've been out here. It's been fantastic. The uh, hospitality has been unbelievable. The weather definitely helps and we've had a great time so it's back to a sunny old blighty for us now back to coaching on tuesday and then a little bit more of that and i've got something to show you that i didn't get to show you at trafford center next that i didn't get to show you last week that i'm going to show you in just a moment so join us back in england and you'll see what that is right then so back in the uk back down at Trafford Golf Centre and this is what I wanted to show you guys last week but didn't get a chance. They've just finished it off a couple of days ago so we've got a brand new putting green, new Huxley putting green. Goes downhill, I think 2% downhill. It runs at 9.5 on the stimp. Fringe grass all around it so we can chip. Then we've built in a pitching area here so this is about 15 yards long. Pitching out up over the bunker onto the new green there. Bunker's having a little bit of work to, to remould it, but a brand new pitching area. So if we are looking at doing short game stuff, we've got that area covered as well. We've obviously got the driving range, which is fantastic with all the technology we've got there, but I can see myself spending a lot of time out here because it is very, very realistic when you're pitching onto it, chipping onto this one and pitching onto the other green. It plays beautifully so uh, I'm going to give it a little test out now and uh, see what we think. So if you've enjoyed this week's episode, guys, a little bit different again, just letting you into an insight of what I've been up to, hit that like button. Remember, comment down below if there's anything you want to see from my week as well also. Thanks for watching. Remember to follow me on all my social media platforms. Subscribe to the channel as well if you haven't already. And remember, hit the bell icon. And I'll see you soon, or I'll see you next week with another Pro's Diaries.